Hey Toolnuts, I'm Doug with Toolnut.com. Today in this video, we're gonna be going over the features on the new Milwaukee M18 Fuel Plunge Track Saw. So there's a lot of adjustment uh, on this saw. We're gonna be going through uh, all the different buttons uh, and features that are built into this saw. So number one, uh, let's, let's start with the track here. Um, you're paying for accuracy when it comes to a track saw. And you can see when you first put this on the track, here, you can see it's loose, all right? To do this on all track saws, pretty much the same thing. You have two buttons on the base of the saw. There's one here, the front of the saw, and one towards the rear. You're gonna start slowly uh, tightening those, and basically what that's gonna do, it moves this ham here and engages it, and you can see it's gonna tighten and push against the rail. So you're gonna wanna slowly do this, on both sides and I keep going back and forth and checking to make sure that's still easy to move the saw on the rail um, but also the side to side and you can see we're still loose here so I'm going to give it another little bit there so I'm good now but now let's check so that's a little tight I'm going to back off a hair on each one getting better still good side to side a little bit more there we go that's right where I like to have it. It's still nice and easy to move. So that's how you're gonna set it to rail. That's extremely important to do um, each time, especially though, when you first get the saw and your track, or if you've replaced this splinter guard, this is what you're gonna cut into. Your first cut is gonna be into this right now uh, on the rails. So if I kind of plunge down, you'll be able to see, I'm gonna push against the, the batteries out off this, by the way. You can see I'm pushing against that. So your first cut is to set the saw and the kerf of the blade to the rail. Basically, once you cut into this, then when you're gonna go mark your material, I'm just gonna use the edges. Basically, you're gonna put the edge of the rail up to your marks to get it exactly where you're gonna cut. So this is gonna be your first cut is into the splinter guard. This is replaceable. We do sell replacement uh, on toolnut.com. Replace it, basically just sticks to the rail. You're gonna pull it off. So extremely important. First step to that is setting the saw to the rail and making sure it's good and tight, but you can also move it. So another feature here, we'll just stick to the base here. There is a bevel uh, lock on this. Milwaukee on their rail um, put this extra groove built in here so that when you're beveling, if you engage this right here, and it's a push down, and then you're gonna twist it, you can see it pops out. That's gonna lock it into the rail. And what's nice with that, oops, got my bevel loose already for this to show you. But basically here, I'm gonna push it and engage it. So I'm locked in now so that when you bevel the saw, it doesn't tilt off the rail. You can see it's locked in. Makita also did this. There's a couple other brands that don't um, on that, uh, but that's a nice feature. So you can use Makita, Milwaukee, Festool. You can interchange the saws, you can interchange the rails. Festool does not have that built into the rail. So if you were to use, let's say, the Milwaukee saw or the Makita on a Festool rail, you're gonna just do it just the way you've always done it. You, you won't be able to engage that. When you bevel, your hand just goes here at the base and then you're gonna make your cut and you're gonna keep your hand on it so that it's not tilting out. You can see when it's not engaged, it tilts off. But like I said, you can put your hand here and then make your cut uh, like you've always done. Festool, it's been that way for years uh, and you can do that, but I really do like that feature that Milwaukee put on their saw there to lock it in to the rail and you can see that works just like that. All right, so since we already have, we'll go through the bevel here, features and all the buttons here on this since I've loosened it. So number one, there's two knobs that you need to loosen. One at the front here, one at the rear here. Also very important, when you're done and you've set your angle on your bevel, make sure you've tightened both. We've seen it unfortunately where the front gets done, the back sometimes gets forgotten, and then you might get burning or you're finding it's hard to make your cut, always check to make sure that you've locked that back in. It does happen for some, uh, sometimes. Um, so just make sure if you're finding burning or it's hard to push a saw, that's more than likely what's going on with it. We've seen a lot of that, unfortunately, over the years 
uh, from our customers with multiple brands, not just Milwaukee, every brand, it happens with that, all right? So I've loosened both my knobs here, front and back. You have a scale here, okay? This scale goes from, you can see it's actually negative one here to 48, all right? So right now, the way the saw is set, when you loosen those knobs, it goes from zero to 45 and automatically stops. There's this button here. If you engage it, just push it, you'll see, then I go to 48 degrees. Then make sure, depending where you wanna stop, you're locking your front and your back bevel locks. You can see now, it just disengaged there. Once I went back past 45, it automatically sets back, which is really cool. And then to go to my negative one, make sure my I'm loose there. If I push that in again, I go past zero. It's gonna be the same thing. As soon as I go past zero, it unlocks and resets it back to itself. Uh, the other button that you can see here, you can set this to 22.5, all right? So it's gonna be the same thing. Make sure front and back are loose here. And I'm just gonna pull this out. This is, gonna pull this out like that and then turn it, go to my 22.5. You can see it then stops me at that. Lock that in, front and back, and you're set to your 22 and a half degrees. To go back, you do have to then pull this back out and get it so that that is standing up there. And now, when I go back and forth, you can see it doesn't automatically just stop at 25. I'm back and set. Again, it's a pull and back, and then pull it back out again and set it back to the arrow to arrow to reset it. You can see there on that there. Okay, so that should be everything as far as setting your bevels. Again, I'm gonna make sure I'm tightening that front and back knob there, all right? Let's go to the scale here. So this is our depth scale here. Um, to adjust this, very simple, it's like most other brands, you're gonna push this button and it slides up and down. It's not gonna move if you don't have that done. You can see it moves slowly. So you can see there's a step here, all right? So when you're using it on the rail, you're gonna use this side right here and it's the top of it, all right? If you're using it off the rail, you're gonna use the bottom step and that's your top. So here, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna show without the rail first. I'm gonna move it up. That's gonna be my zero, is right there to the top of this, okay? If I'm using it with the rail, that's my zero, we're stopping at the top of that. The majority of the time, you're gonna be using it on, on a rail uh, for that. Um, and you can see when it comes down, if we set it here, again, there's no battery on this saw, and I plunge it, it's gonna stop, and that's zero, because the blade is not gonna hit the top of that. So it's perfect, all right? Now, if you need some adjustment, though, there is this knob here. And you can see, when I plunge down, the knob, that's what's hitting the top of that, my stop on my scale. If you need some fine adjustment, depending on maybe you've resharpened your blade or you want it slightly uh, proud or a little bit um, less of a cut there, you're gonna adjust that. But generally from the factory, you know, you might wanna check that. It should be preset to work with your blades. Um, you know, that's only for adjustment. Like I said, you're pretty much not gonna wanna really mess with that much. Um, that is only for generally, I believe they did that for sharpening of blades or if you need to take something in between what you have here on the scale. All right, so you got that there. This, since we're up here too, this is your scoring attachment. Let's see, there you go. So if you engage this, this is just a score and it presets the saw to go to a certain depth. And you can see here, if I take it off the wood, it automatically stops there. And it's not even hitting our scale. So there's a you know step here where it actually stops the saw when it gets to that point, or I'm sorry, it's actually further up where it's engaging in that. You can't see, it's internal, um, but you can see that's for scoring. So it only allows the blade to come out that much. Um, always remember if you find to where you're going to do something and it's not plunging any deeper, check this and just disengage it and I should be good to go with that. Blade change on this. Um, your onboard 
storage right there for your Allen key for your blade change is there. So you're going to take that out, get that ready. Again, battery is off the tool. Always make sure you're doing this without. I always like to, when you know, no matter what brand I'm doing, I always like to put my scale all the way down just to get out of the way. And then what you're going to do on this, there's this lock feature here on the saw. Engage that. Actually, I'm sorry. You're going to plunge it first. Engage this, and then it stops at a certain depth. And then you're going to turn it on its side. Now, with this saw, you can see it does not lock the arbor. Some brands, when you engage it like that to change the blade, it does lock the arbor also. It does not. It's only locking the depth. There is an arbor lock here on the saw. You're going to engage that. Now you can see it's not engaging yet. I got to kind of spin the blade. Now it engaged. Once I got to the spot there, you can also see there's a riving knife. This moves out of the way. All right. And then you're just going to, on this, it's lefty to loosey. Move that. Move that lock. Again, make sure you're buying a six and a half inch, 20 millimeter blade. All right, you can put other brands in here. There's gonna be other brands that are six and a half, 20 millimeter. Again, make sure your kerf is the same though. That will match your rails. If it's a different kerf, your measurements are gonna be off. And to put it back, very simply, always make sure and see these have arrows on it. There's also an arrow here, the outside of the case. Make sure that matches. I'm just gonna put the blade back in there. See, we've cleared our riving knife. Make sure this key goes back in properly. You can see there's a notch there. Because if you don't get that in there and you go to use a saw, you're gonna have a problem. When we have seen it before, it does happen. These things happen. Okay, now I've gotta make sure that my arbor lock is engaged again. Tighten it. You don't have to go super tight and go super crazy with this. Just snug it up, all right? You don't want to have a problem trying to take it off later. Make sure this is going to go back in the handle. Then to disengage, I'm going to unlock it here. And then as soon as I just push this and the trigger, you can hear it unlocked and I'm going to return it back. Um, one thing I want to do try, if I have this, because I did it the other way and I didn't like that. I want to see so I don't remember if I tried this before. I want to lock it first. Okay, you can do that because it's a lot easier doing it that way. Lock it first, make sure the blade's not going to hit the table, push down and it automatically locks. So you don't have to do it the first way I showed it. That's why I thought. Again, unlock it, down slightly, it clicks and unlocks and it returns back. That's how you're going to do your blade change. Again, make sure Put your Allen key back in your handle so you don't lose it and it's there when you need it. Dust port. Again, you'll get up to 90% dust collection with this saw. Generally, it's going to be with an extractor. Um, you can use multiple brands of that. Milwaukee has a bunch of cordless uh, extractors or vacuums available with uh, different size hoses. Um, standard though for industry, uh, like 27 millimeter is going to go inside hoses. If you're using a 36 millimeter hose, uh, you're going to go on the outside uh, for that. And then this is also variable speed right here. That's six speeds. Generally, majority of the time, most people are using this to cut uh, woods. Uh, so you're going to be at six. Um, blades will generally always have what recommended RPM are going to be on that. So if you're using a blade other than a wood blade for maybe a more specialized material, that's where you would want to use the variable speed and just go off the recommendations and set your variable speed there. Uh, and that's it for that. Um, to get this to engage, if you do, it does have a trigger lock. You have to hit this button. You can see it moves this up and allows you to plunge into it, but it also unlocks the trigger. Okay. And you don't have to be holding that once you're engaged in the triggers. You don't have to keep holding that while you're making your cut on that. Uh, I believe we hit everything. So for this and any other Milwaukee products, check it out now at toolnut.com.